Hey gamers, so Sonic Forces just came out, it's the new sequel to Sonic 4. Now first off, this game's been getting a pretty bad rep, but I think people are just being unfair because it came out so close to Bubsy the Wally Strike Back, but you have to understand that this game is actually awesome. You can make your own girlfriend to date Sonic, which is really all we've been asking for in a Sonic game, and you can give her a gun. I don't know why Sonic Team hasn't tried this since Shadow the Hedgehog, that game was awesome too. They even brought back the old Sonic after all these years. But but enough about Sonic Mania, Sonic Forces is about Sonic and his son Gerald who have to defeat Eggman before his giant pulsating asshole robot destroys the world. There's also a new villain who is so cool. Huh? Whoa, this guy is faster than Sonic! and he can make clones of villains from other Sonic games. Like Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, uh, Sonic CD, Sonic Monsters University. That was a faker. The story is a lot like the old Saturday morning cartoon, except without Sally Acorn, so it's much easier not to get distracted. I've seen a lot of people complaining that the levels are too linear, but they don't know what they're talking about, okay? I think you're given a lot of freedom in how you approach a level. Like, like on this water slide one. Now, if you want, instead of doing anything at all, you can actually walk out of the room, make a cup of tea, come back, and your girlfriend will be right by the finish line. I don't get how you can call this bad level design when Sonic Team, at a Game Guys conference, actually taught how to do le good level design good. Fuck you, Nintendogs, look at your level design, you're just walking in a straight line, that's why you're banned, you piece of shit. Plus, Sega said Sonic games wouldn't be bad anymore, so how can Sonic Forces be bad? Use your fucking head. This mini death egg robots? <laughs> There's also a new hard mode where if you press it you have to jump sometimes and it really ramps up the difficulty quite a bit. I'm sick of games being too easy nowadays. The 2D segments are really hard too. There's a new feature where Gerald doesn't control at all how you want him to and it's, like I said it's a good challenge, it's very refreshing but sometimes I get really mad and punch my Sonic plushie and I have to put on the water slide level while I take a nap to calm down. But don't worry if you don't do that well, you'll still get an S rank. Then you have the girlfriend character whose gameplay is really interesting because instead of holding up and square, you actually have to hold up and R2 to finish a level, which is a nice mix up of the Sonic formula. And I, I haven't tried out hard mode with her yet, but I bet on there you have to jump too. Sick of those piece of shit rings? I hear ya. Now, there are no lives or a Shop, and they don't refill your boost gauge so you really don't have to collect them at all other than one to stay alive. I really appreciate Sonic Team streamlining how rings work like this, like I'd collect 100 of them in previous games and suddenly the counter would go from two digits to three and a number in the corner of the screen would go up too. I can't tell you how many times this threw me off. Notice how the 2D segments look like they were made in a level editor. Could Sega be teasing a supersonic maker? I'm glad the level moves this slowly or else I'd miss everything going on in the background, but that's not all. Everyone's favourite stage, Green Hill, is back, baby, and that's not all either. Out of the 30 levels in the game, five of them are Green Hill. I guess Sonic Team finally noticed the lack of Green Hill in recent Sonic games. I mean, what games in the last 10 years have had Green Hill? Uh, Sonic Chronicles and Sonic 2, and it wasn't even called Green Hill in that game. Now, I know what you're thinking. Damn, there are just too many great games coming out lately. We got Mario Odyssey, Wolfenstein 2, the new Wolfenstein, uh, Minecraft Story Mode, a Telltale Game Series, Season 2, Episode 4, Below the Bedrock. Sega knows how long your backlog is, so they very graciously made Sonic Forces three hours long so you can quickly move on to the next game. What other company would do this for gamers? Come on, Atlas. I don't want to play Persona 5 for 100 hours. What I want is to dress my Sonic girlfriend up as Persona 5. Yes, for all you fashion enthusiasts out there, there are tons of ways to dress up your girlfriend. In fact, you spend more time okaying through all the unlockables at the end of each level than actually playing. If I had to give even the slightest bit of criticism, I think the boss fights are kind of unoriginal. Ripping off of Star Wars, ripping off of Oss, ripping off Splatoon. Likewise, there's a theater menu that is bad because it shows you the cutscene of Sonic getting beaten up, which is which makes me cry, I don't like it. Overall, I think Sonic Heroes is a brilliant addition to the franchise, and Hooters did a great job at promoting it. It's fast, it's funny. Bring some chili dogs next time. <laughs> he, he loves chili dogs. And it has Charmy B. I can see this game being brought up alongside the series greats instead of the more admittedly bad ones, especially the infamous 2006 game that almost destroyed the franchise, Sonic Rivals. Don't let the haters tell you this game is bad, okay? I had a blast. And 
and it's the best Sonic game since Sonic R. Just kidding, assholes. There's still no Chow Garden, so it's terrible. Fuck you.